Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Aztec mask on recycled pine. I'm guessing it's recycled pine. It seems awfully light. But the person I got it off said it was a pine TV stand, so I want to guess that it's pine. And it comes in at literally just short three and three quarters of an inch thick. And we've sanded it down. You can see the original side there. I've just sanded that down just so we can see our template a little bit better. As always, we've printed it out. We've stuck it down to the wood itself. And I've gone over it with a pen and basically just traced it all out using carbon paper underneath like so. So let's just go around it all. It takes five minutes or so. For me, this is all part of the process of making the project. That way we can remove that and we can use that over and over again, should we need be. Personally myself, I only do one of each project. I think maybe twice in over 600 projects have I actually made two of the same. So these are always one-offs for me. And you can see we've transferred it all nicely onto there. Just about to see that out there. Now take your time to shade in the areas you want to remove or obviously the areas, the areas you want to leave. Now for me today on this one, I want to remove most of the wood. We can go back to our template again. You might just see it a bit better on here. We want to remove all the white sections. So we're going to remove all this. It's a lot more work involved and a lot more router work to remove all that. Because when it's all finally removed, we will spray it all totally black, as you see it here, once I've gone round and cut it out. I'm going to cut it out on a scroll saw. I seem to have got into the little habit of using a scroll saw and router on most of my projects now. So we will cut it out first and then we'll spray it all black and all these sections we have removed, we're going to inlay them with multicoloured resins so it really pops out nicely. Another option is to remove all the black lines. So all these white sections are left standing up by three millimetres. I'm going to do mine in depth and you can actually paint all these. And that will still look cool piece. But for me, we're going to go the other way and remove all the white sections. Your choice. You might just want to remove all the black sections and then paint over it. So we have different choices out there. Just all depends how you feel on the day. I've changed my mind twice on this one and I'm going to start doing it now before I change it again. So all these shaded areas we are going to remove with the router itself. You'll see as we progress through this little project. As always for me, little CNC bits we call these. I think they are called PCB carbide engineering bits. Bit of a mouthful. So we say CNC bits because I think they use them in CNC machines. Which goes inside a router, which goes inside the CNC. So, yeah, work that out yourself. They do have a small shaft on them, 3.75 millimeter. I haven't got a light on it, have I? For some reason. Give me two seconds. I'm just going to pop a light on it for some reason. I haven't got one on. Okay, that's a little bit better. I actually film off my mobile phone, so I just literally just rely on the light from the phone to do all our little filming. So there's our 3.175 millimeter. CNC bit that will fit your Dremel no problem if you prefer to use a Dremel with a little router attachment But for me, I have a quarter inch router an old black and decker DN66 So you will need an adapter reducer call it but that lets you slide in there 6.35 millimeter Your little CNC bit has now got a quarter inch shaft on there Can I just point out you might be noticing a bit of a shine there on my thumbnail? I've just noticed it then I haven't started doing my nails, by the way. I've literally just sprayed a little project for somebody quickly. And I've, had a, I've ended up with some on my hands. Then I've gone straight into doing our little video. So, <laughs> you've got a nice little... It's a shiny gloss nail there. But uh, don't be concerned about it. Anyway, CNC bit. That will do all our lines. And remember, as always for me, we want to route out up to that line. So we're going to remove all this section. So we just want to be... To the right hand side or above that line as we see it when we come down here we'll be above it there and below it there so once you've actually gone around your full sections you just more or less will just want to make out your pencil line the reason why we do that if you've got a small section let's say this piece here and you're routing out on the line by the time you've gone down there 
allowing for your thickness of your bit, which is 3.175 millimeter, should you go down deep enough, and you route out on the line there, you're going to narrow that section there. There won't be a lot left, I can assure you. So you want to be above that one and below that one. So base that little piece, and that will be left behind at the end of the day. That's one of the sections we need to make our little barrier because we are going to put resin in the top and the bottom. So always up to the line, always up to the line. Obviously, if we were moving the clear sections now, you would be up to the line there. So you're not actually altering the bit itself. Now, as I've drawn the template, it's not symmetrical. The two halves are not perfect, and I'm happy with that. There's somewhere that's got a bigger space there, and that eye is not quite central. I don't think the Aztecs were too concerned when they did it, so I'm not going to be too concerned either. So we do all our lines with the little CNC bit. That shouldn't be too much problem. Once we've done that, we'll pop on one of these lovely engineering end milling bits. I keep saying engineering. End milling bits. These are fantastic because they clear out really nice. You pop them into your same adapter like so. I push up to that little barrier. I struggle to find them with the barriers on now, but they will be identical pieces, I can assure you. And we'll set it to the same depth, which will be three millimetres, and we will use this to clear out all that penciled in area. Remember, we've already gone down round with our CNC bit, so as we clear it out, this will all pop out nicely, hopefully. Once it's done, nice little tidy up. We'll use the flexi cable on the end of a Dremel. Just grab it quickly to show you. One of these, cannot recommend one of these enough. Just eBay specials, and they're attached to the end of your Dremel over there. And they're fantastic for carving, engraving, clearing out with. We've got a little engraving bit on there. And we can use that, just to give it a general tidy up. And then we'll come in with a mouse sander and a bit of sandpaper. And that should be it for our tools once we've sanded it all down and cleared it up. Quick spray over, and then we'll start filling it with resin. Okay, so we'll pop our little CNC bit into our adapter collet like so. We'll set it to three millimeters, which is literally the thickness of the CNC bit. Remember, they're 3.175. I made a little piece of wood over here like so. And you can purchase depth gauges, there's not a lot to them. I will sit my router on there, and there's my depth there. And like I say, it's the same as one of your CNC or end millimeters. Okay, let's start routing this one out. And we'll see how we go. <laughs> Okay, so we've made it all the way round with that 15 degree CNC bit. You can more or less see from there. We've done all our lines. Remember, we've gone up to the lines there. If you got really close, you can just make out the pencil line going all the way round. And every so often, I'll just take a little section out. That's a nice little depth gauge for when we put on our end milling bits. Remember, these are all eBay and Amazon. We get one that's a nice size. I want to go for the colour green here for some reason. Like I said previously, you might find them without those on now. And we simply just pop that into our adapter reducer collet. You will get a lot more pieces from that CNC, a lot more projects, you'll see. We slot that in there, we pop it in the router, we'll just set it to that gauge there, and literally 
route out all the shaded areas. I did go around with a pencil again because I noticed the way I hold my router as I'm rubbing my hand, my hand on like so I tend to rub away the pencil but we don't want to come back and start routing out all this section we need all that leaving so take your time to go around again if need be just to shade in those areas that we want to remove there's quite a lot going on here but hopefully once we've removed it the clear out section it will start taking shape nicely okay we'll pop this in the router and start routing this one out Okay, so we've made it all the way around with our little end milling bits. I've just used a small one on the old piece. It come out really easy. There's obviously bigger bits to clear it out quicker. But I've certainly got no problem with that. Everything's still intact and it's cleared out really nice. The end milling bits are good because they do route out the bottom section as well as the side. So you can come in and just nip away should you require it. But obviously I've still got all my little pencil lines here. So we're gonna to have to sand over this, clear that up. Before that, I want to use a scroll saw, and literally just cut this out. Nothing too complicated. You could also leave that on that wood as it is and route out the back section, similar to what we've got in that little corner, there, that sample piece, if you remember. And you could take all that back out, lowering it all down by three millimeters and leaving it on that piece of wood as it is. But for me, a little scroll saw and a just simple case of cutting it around. Remember, We've got our pencil line there, so we're just going to follow that line. Now quickly, there is three types of blade. You get a standard pin blade. This will work on this project, no problem. And then they have a pin at both ends. Can we see there? Just about, here we go. One, two, three. Just about see that, can't we? So they just hook onto your more cheaper saws. You want the blade to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you know you've got your blade in the right way. You could use this on this one, no problem. There's a lot more turning with these blades, so you'd have to start over there, let's say, and you'd have to turn that into your blade, and then do a full turn just to get that little section down there, and then a turn again, and basically twist and twist and twist all the way around the piece. It just doesn't work for me. So, I use spiral blades. Spiral blades cut in any direction. So I can literally just have that wood on the saw as it is. Start there. And literally just cut it round like so. And we can feed it across here, bring it down and feed it round. Basically without even moving that wood round. So that works a lot easier for me. They take a little getting used to the spirals. And a lot of people don't like them. And a lot of people won't use them at all. But like I said, the teeth are spiralled all the way. So they will cut in any direction. And they are ideal for larger projects where you won't get that wood turned on your saw of the uh, size of your table for it to fit on and obviously the other little blade is a pinless blade they're fantastic that's what most people use and it's just a clamp at top clamp at bottom and your teeth same again smooth on the way down rough on the way up they're perfect if you're doing really small detailed work unfortunately i haven't got any on here but we'll pick the smallest section let's imagine this is really small and we want to dig out the middle of that piece you'll dig your pilot hole pop that in and you could cut that out Whereas with your pin blades, 
you'd actually get away with it with this one but anything smaller you wouldn't get it in because those pins would be in the way so pinless blades so if you are thinking about purchasing a scroll saw you definitely want one that takes pinless blades unfortunately mine don't my old drapper so i have to use these adapter clamps on mine and they just literally put your blade in there and we use an allen key to tighten that up and that now hooks on where my pins would originally hook on my saw and it works fine i've had no issues with these i've been using these for a couple of years now and it's certainly cheaper than going out and buying a new saw same with these spirals though smooth on the way down rough on the way up so we'll cut that out with a spiral and then we'll come in with our little engraving bit on the end of a flexi cable that attaches to the end of my dremel and i use engraving bits with a nice flat bottom you'll get plenty of these off ebay for next to nothing they come in all shapes and sizes small heads here round ones flat heads and i'll just use this one just so we can get inside there into those little bits and give it a nice tidy up same with these they do have the roughness on the side so if you want to just get around there you can just nibble away slowly and just take that right up to your line if you want to we don't have to focus too much on the bottom section we're going to pour resin in that so we're going to hide all that with our resin if you were going to paint this you would put your paint on now you could paint all these sections and then give it a nice sanding down afterwards and then paint or stain your framework after we'll be doing it the other way we're going to put our paint on any varnish like a complete finished project and then basically we're just going to fill it all in with resin just slightly off the top so we can still feel that routed out area okay so we'll cut it out general tidy up bit of sandpaper in there we'll also get a mouse sander just to clear all those pencil lines and then when we come back we'll be looking to spraying it black or using some kind of wood dye but let's cut it out first and tidy it up Right, that's all nicely tidied up. We use the mouse sander to skim over the top. We got rid of all those pencil lines. And then we went in with our little flexi cable with an engraving bit. Just get us right to these little areas around here. And good old bit of sandpaper. Just around those edges off. And take away the sharpness around the full piece. Front and back. So the next stage now for me is. Originally I was just going to spray this black. And we're going to spray it all black couple of coats and then basically we're just going to fill it in with resin mixed with acrylic paint but i'd like to have a try and see if we can have some of this wood still showing through so i'm just going to coat it all with a dark teak dye and it will be a simple case of just brushing it all on and it soaks in nicely like so as you can see and we want to get all those side walls so it's just as easy basically just to cover the full piece because when we put the resin in remember we're not going to go right to the top we just want enough so we can still feel that routed out area so not forgetting the side bits as well just leave it a nice nice soaking in like so we'll do the full piece exactly the same you can just throw it in there's no out form to it it won't affect the resin when that goes in obviously once it's nice and dry before we do that we will spray on some varnish We'll talk about that nearer the time. Okay, we get the general idea from that. I'll just continue and cover the full piece with this dark teak dye. And then we'll spray on a little bit of varnish. Okay. 
Okay, that's all nicely stained now with that dark teak. And it's also dried nicely, so we've got no problems there. I've done all the side bits, and we didn't put some on the back today on this one. So the next stage for me is we're going to spray some varnish on this. One, because I do like a nice shiny finish on my projects. This is an indoor piece, remember. We wouldn't be putting resin in this and putting it outdoors. So, one, give it a nice shine. And two, with the varnish, we just want to help seal the insides of this wood if we can. That will just stop any resin or paint. You will do exactly the same with paint before you put your stain on. And it just stops your paint from bleeding into the side walls. Now, I don't have a lot of issue with pine or fencing wood. So I normally brush in my paint there and it's quite thick so you have less chance of it bleeding in anyway but to be safe we're just going to spray the full thing with that nice shiny varnish there is wood sealers out there that you can purchase which is literally just brush on first once it dries in that will seal all your walls for you remember we're not going to go to the top with this anyway so we're just going to be slightly below level once all that resin's gone in this project will be finished because remember We've already sprayed our varnish on. And we'll see that go a lot darker once we put this on. We want to make sure we get right inside those nuts and crannies here. The little pieces, make sure we get in. We'll let this first one literally just soak in. And then I'll go outside and we'll do all the side bits as well. We'll come back when it's all nicely dried. Hopefully we get a nice shine on it, and then it's resin time. Right, it's resin time. That's all nicely dried. You can just about make out the shine on there. We could have probably done a few more sprays, but that's happy enough for what I want, and hopefully it's sealed all that wood up nicely. Now we're just going to basically just fill this all in with resin. Nearly to the top, not quite, and when it cures, we will get a concave effect, and that's just enough so we can still feel all that nice routed out area. So we're not going to quite go level, just enough, like I say, so we can still feel it once it's all finished. And once the resin goes in, this project will be finished, apart from popping the little hanger on the back. So Vista 1 today, this has been my favourite for now, I have used different resins in the past, it's a one-to-one -one mix, which basically you want A, your resin, to be exactly the same amount of B, your adner. So whatever you mix, I like to use these little plastic party cups, things, containers. They're ideal because they have the little grooves on the side. So I just mark up five. I, want, I wouldn't mix a full half of this. By the time we've messed on, mixed it, doing your different colours. It's a hot day today. It could be... Uh, start uh, going a little bit ahead on us. So we want to be steady and I'd rather mix small amounts. Take your time and always mix another small amount. So anyway, five of A with our little line as we call it. And we're gonna have exactly the same amount of B. Some resins are two to one, some resins are three to one. Some are deep pour resins, some are shallow pours up to a quarter inch or whatever. So just be careful that some resins you actually weigh by weight. So you will need a little scales for those. For these one to ones, you can't go wrong because it basically is same of A to the same of B, mix the two together. What I'll do, I'll mix these off camera because I'm basically just leveling up to those two marks I've just shown you. Give it a nice mix round and we're good to go. For colours, acrylic paints for me. We're going to throw it all on this one today, whatever we've got. And we just basically just mix a bit in with your mixed resin. Give it a nice steer round. Steering purposes, good old party spoons, knife and forks. These are ideal because they have a nice little lip all the way on the back there, a little groove that's going to be perfect for us we can scoop that out and just fill our little sections in like that you can use syringes if you wanted to or them petite things i've tried both of those they just don't work for me so a little scoop with our spoon drop it in like so and then we'll get a good old cocktail stick just realize i haven't got it with me two seconds here we go so then we'll get a cocktail stick and we'll just help that feed it on its way and then we'll mix the next colour, the next colour, and the next colour, and so on. And at the end of the project, we will skim over with a lighter, just to get rid of all those air bubbles. I'm not sure if that's either. Just a little lighter like so. We'll just skim over the top, and that helps all the bubbles out of the way. Okay, we'll mix our first little batch of resin, and start filling this one in. I 
Okay, these are now ready and nicely mixed. Now that's far too much for our first colour, so we're simply just going to transfer some to one side and hopefully we will get another colour out of that. This is just pure guesswork now, which we need. So we'll use that for another colour, so we just pop that to one side. I saw also, excuse me, have a little silicon Q thing maker. So any leftovers, I fill this up and then eventually we have multicoloured cubes which we will incorporate into another project. So there's our first little batch of resin done. We'll show you the first one and then we'll speed things up because it's the same process and it's going to be a slow process today. The good thing with resin, we can do two or three colours, go off and do whatever we have to do and always come back later in the day. Please put your gloves on. You want a proper resin mask and you want plenty of ventilation. Please don't cop, copy me by example. So there's our resin there. There's our bit of acrylic paint. They do say 10% of whatever your mix is, but personally myself, I tend to just throw in what I think looks right. And I've never had any issue with nothing not mixing at all. And if it doesn't look green enough, as we call it, with this one first colour, I'll simply just pop a little bit more in. So we're going to fill in as we go. We're going to start down here. On these bigger ones, we could probably pour it out, but I just want to put a little bit out just to see what the colour's like. I think we might have got it right first time, so make a mark of that one there. And obviously we want the same again on this side, just to make sure that we don't fill in the wrong section. It will level out slowly, but get yourself a little cocktail stick and we can help just feed it along like so. Okay, we'll speed things up and we'll have this filled in and come back when it's ready to put our little light on. Okay, that's it. We've got all our resin in there. And as each colour's gone in, I left it going across with a little lighter like so. And that just helps all those little bubbles come to the top. And that's it. We're all nicely full. We'll leave this for a good 24 hours. Find a nice cover for it, a tray, a lid of some description. Because any flies, dust, they will find this resin, that is for sure. So we'll put this to one side, cover it over, and then we'll come back when we're back down in the shed, 24 hours, and we'll see what we've got. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now it's roughly about 24 hours later, if not less. Now I will leave this for another two or three days just to make sure that everything's nicely cured but you can see from that we had no issues as such and everything is all nice and solid if i was going to be really picky the, the color yellow but a little bit of an issue with with filming and the heat of the day it started turning into uh, honey or treacle so it got a little bit thick on me and that's really play about with that one so that's not as smooth as it should be and i don't mind that personally and i noticed this morning when we checked in the eye there there's one little bubble i don't even want to get it in focus to show you no there's one little pinhead there and that was in a little bubble that popped at the last minute but unfortunately it's left a little bubble shape in its nose there but apart from that there's a couple of speckles of dust i mean i'm going to really get serious on myself here little speckles down here so remember Put your nice cover on and that little dot there you can remember get a lighter early on not today now but uh, 
earlier on and we could have softened that resin up and that would have probably disappeared altogether but i don't want them perfect i don't want it to look like it's made on some mass produced cnc machine in a factory these are all handmade remember so we're going to have a little defects and personally that doesn't bother me but apart from that everything else went fine no problem at all so remember it's on recycled pine we're going to call this one we use our little cnc bits to do all our lines with remember and if i clear out and milling bits these are all ebay or amazon i will put links in the description instead of using black paint good old dark teak wood dye we use that just to cover everything with and once that was dry nice spray with any any varnish i can find clear lacquer 151 on this one it could be anything that's kicking around in the shed that's just to give it that little shine and remember we also want to seal all that wood should the resin decide to want to bleed into the side walls and if we get close enough you might just get it there there we go we've had no bleeding whatsoever everything's nice and crisp everything's where it should be and that's it this little project is finished i will put a little hook on the back normally on thicker projects it's about three quarter inch thick i've been known just to route out a little slip for hanging purposes but i'll pop a little hook on this one but as far as this video goes this little project is finished and it also measures in at 14 inches by 14 inches and there we go aztec mask routed out on recycled pine and inlaid with resin mixed with acrylic paints. Thank you very much for watching.